Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Joe. In this week, we have talked about how to display our player status on UI Canvas. When the player receives enough experience, his statics will increase by their own formula. All information of this player statics has been added in the inspector by ourselves. When the player reaches the maximum level, our current experience value and the next level experience will return to zero, without any other error. In this episode, we will refactor our scripts first, and then add more players on our project. Each player has their own data. We will control their order with the UI buttons. Alright, let's get started. As I mentioned in episode 3, we want all of our UI elements to declare and put inside in our UI manager script. While in episode 3, we declare several UI tags inside our player statics script. Moving this UI text to UI Manager can be beneficial in a lot of ways because our scripts will be easy to check by our teammates and easy to read for us. UI Manager can focus on all of the UI stuff. If something wrong on the UI, you can of course always go in the UI Manager first and don't need to find our player statics. Imagine we have many scripts. If one UI pass go wrong, if we type UI namespace in many other scripts, our code will look messy and it's a waste of time finding this error. In many games, we need one game manager scripts to responsible for our game control, such as the time, resume or pause, current things, and so on. In this case, inside the player statics script, let's move our UI tags and paste these lines to the UI manager script. We need to make sure each UI elements move to the UI manager. You will notice that one of our namespace is turned to gray color because we did not use that namespace now. In other words, no UI elements inside the player status now. We can delete this line. After erasing the UI tags, another error appears. We will see the Unity detect many errors on our player status script because we didn't have these variables now. So we can move these methods to the UI manager script. Later in player statics script, we can call these methods from UI manager. Turn to UI manager script. Now the error is that we did not get the reference of the player statics so that we cannot use that variables from player statics. The direct way is to type player statics dot on the front of our each errors. Don't forget we have declared the player statics type already, which means we can access any public variables from this class. If you still have some errors, you can check whether the variables field in the player statics class is public or not. Also, don't forget to type player statics dot game object with animators as well. After fixing that errors, we can call these methods in player statics script. We want to play this animation when our player level up. So we can call these methods inside the level up methods. We use find object of type UI manager dot the methods name making animation. Don't forget to set our methods as public so that our other scripts can use it. Bend to Unity drag our UI tags to their new slots. Then press play. Everything works correct. This is a little process of refactoring. Our UI manager only manages all of our UI elements, while the player statics script only responsible for the level up logic and the math formula of the statics. Each script focuses on their own unique work. It's so handy for you and your teammates to check and reuse. You can delete some unnecessary codes now. One more tip, if you feel your scripts are so long, you can simply click here to hide the body of these methods. It's convenient for you to overview your logic in this script. If each method is responsible for only one function, it's easy to read and understand for us. Next part, if we want to add more players to our canvas, what should we do? Each player has their own unique status. We want to select one of them and our UI canvas will display the selected player statics. 
Let's drag one new sprite to our project. You can download these resources from the GitHub. I have shared the links below. Then we can use the automatically methods to slice the image. After that, select our player one game object. Hold Command D or Control D to duplicate this game object several times, and rename them. Because each player has their different status, so post the video and edit by yourself. As I mentioned, some public variables might not need to edit in the inspector. You can follow my steps or edit by yourself. After completing all of the player statics, let's create one empty object called players and drag all of our players game object as a child of this empty game object. It's well easy to manage in the hierarchy. Then create one UI image and change its size. It will work as a bank button. Snap this UI image to the bottom left of our player image. Then select the bank button game object, holding command D or control D to duplicate as the next button. Then select both of them. Actually, there are two UI image instead of the UI button. So we need to add the button component first. Open the Visual Studio. Now we have to change the player statics type to the array because now we have many players instead of one. The array is a way of storing a collection of the same type together. We use open and close square brackets followed by the type of the array. After that, many errors appear as follows. Let's first create one private integer type variables called current index. This variable determines which player is our current player display in the game. If the number is zero, our first player will be displayed on the canvas, including his all information. While if that number is number one, our second player will display as well, etc. At the beginning of the game, we set our first player as the default player in the game. So each time our UI canvas will display the current player information. The current index determines which one will display on the screen. So we can use open and close brackets current index to change this error. Because the player statics is the array, we use current index as the index of this array. We can double click our variables to check our player statics is the collections of the player statics class now. The index of the array is the current index which determines the number of the player displayed on the UI cameras. Alright, back to Unity and drag our players to the player statics array. 
Let's change the HP to 500 and check whether our current progress is correct or not. Okay, our health point is 500, which means our current player index is 0, and the UI canvas display our first player statics information correctly. Then we can start to make our button methods. Back to UI manager, let's create two public methods called next button, last button. Only public methods can be called from the button component on click event. Inside the next button methods, if we press the button, we want our player 1 disappear and display our player 2 information. When we click again, we want to display our player 3. We want to display player 4. When we click again, we want to display player 5. When the player 5 is the last player click again, we want to turn back to 0, right? In this case, we only have 4 players. So when our current index is 3, because our current index from the 0, our index value should change from the 3 to 0. We can use debug.log to check first. Back to Unity, first select our next button game object, go to button script and drag our UI manager to the slot, and choose to the public next button methods. Press the play button. When we click our current index increase by 1. However, we only have 4 players and it should be stopped at number 3 instead of number 4. Back to code. Oh, it should be the length minus 1 because we cannot reach to the array length number. Also, let's rename some game objects and debug log our current index in the star methods. Then, test again. On the console window, when we enter the game, our current index is 0 which means now UI canvas display our first player. When we press button, the index increased by 1. When the index is equal to 3, we can click again. The number will bank to 0. Cool. We can pause the game and check on the console window. Each click, we want to display the next player. So each click, we want to update our player information. Inside of the next button methods, we can call the update player statics methods. Try again. We can see when we press the button, our player and its information will change. Also, try to press the spacebar to check our previous methods. When we press space, each player can level up, and all of the methods can work as well. Now, try to finish the bank button by yourself and understand the rule of the current index in this method. Pause the video and try it. I will be back in 2 minutes. Alright, let's finish our bank button. The current index should be minus 1. When the current index is 0, when we press again, the current index should return to the last index of our array. The last index of our array is the array.length minus 1 because the index starts from 0. You can debug the law to test first. Don't forget to drag our UI manager to the button script first and choose to the public methods. It works in the console window. Great. We can call the update player statics methods inside our next button. If you want to see clearly, you can create one UI text to display our current player.
you can create one UI text to display our current player amount of our players. Adjust this font size and position. Declare this UI text first, and then inside the update player statics methods, we want this new UI text display as this format. Drag the UI text to the script. Away. Oh, we ignore one thing. We want the text display start from number 1 instead of the number 0, but our current index start from 0. So inside the UI text script, we have to add 1. Then try again. Now we have almost finished this video. Also, you can add some shadow or outline components to our UI elements. Alright, this is the end of this video. The text version of this episode has been uploaded from the link below. All episode complete projects has been uploaded on my Google Drive. So feel free and check them out. All resources can be downloaded from my GitHub. If you want to learn more, click my profile and subscribe to my channel. I really hope one of my videos can inspire you a lot. Finally, if you like this video, don't forget to smash the likes and subscribe button. See you in the next time.